إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفر ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات عملنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وسلم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير حد حد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر أمور محتثاتها وكل محتثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Brothers and sisters بإذن الله It's only befitting that I begin this particular talk with a sad, a sad heart not to seek any fame, recognition um, but this is sad. This is truly sad. And wallahi, whether you can see it or not, Allah knows what's in my heart. This is truly sad, inshallah ta'ala, to see what have unfolded right before my eyes with someone who I have, you know, studied, traveled, lived, and enjoyed their company, their pleasure in regards to their advice and dealing with them. Alhamdulillah, and sharing a awesome and amazing platform on exposing some of the hulu and extremism that our other brothers may have felt into in regards to dealing with some of the principles of Al-Islam. And now, to hear this, I'm going to play this so that you might can understand exactly where I'm at with this and the reason why we are talking about this. So just pay attention and listen so you don't think I'm just picking on somebody. But like I said... I don't take pleasure in this at all. This is not no pleasure for me. Pay attention. She was Abraham's uh, second wife. All right. So, so basically, he was saying that even though it was bad that she was enslaved and it was bad that people were conquered and killed and she was taken captive, so look at the good that came out of it. That Abraham eventually got married her and then they gave birth to the modern day Arabs and Muhammad and stuff like that. So, yeah, Hacker, Hacker, that's her name, Hacker, right? So, I, I'm thinking to myself, a Ucha Ucha T, Krista Ucha, that's the Tamika. So, he had, so basically saying that some, this had to happen for something good or something else to happen on the planet. So, my question is, is that, you know, before I get into this, this is why this comment, this is why I'm not doing this tonight. So you're telling me that God or Allah has to allow other people to be slaughtered and enslaved and killed for other stuff to happen. Why, if he's so great and powerful, why not just not have that happen at all? Nobody should be able to get killed or die or murdered for something else to happen. Like, if you're God, then just let that happen. She could have met Abraham without her ever being enslaved. You understand what I'm saying? Like, why would God have somebody get enslaved? Like... Like you basically saying that America needed to be created, or the United States needed to be created for other stuff to happen, right? But so millions of people had to die for the United States to finally exist for other stuff to happen. Why not just decree the stuff that happened without nobody dying? It don't, you know, the psychology don't add up. This is what I'm saying. People are in cults. Why would you, why would you, why, 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 why? what's the point of that God sits back and he watched that all happen? You know what I'm saying? Say God and Satan is the same thing. It's all the same thing. In fact, if you look at some of the uh, agnostic tales, um, Satan is just a son of God who was, who was cast out. So that's all one family. If you go farther back than that, they also call it manifest destiny, exactly. If you go back farther than that, um, you will find that it all goes back to Sumeria and the Anunnaki and stuff like that. So that's a whole other. You go back farther, you go back. All these religions go back to one source and Sumer and those gods. All of it goes back to them. But yes, they call it manifest destiny. Okay, they believe that God gives them the right because to kill and invade and colonize other people because it's going to bring a greater good. You know what I'm saying? So it's narcissistic and it's by you. That's like, baby girl. These kind. 
concept of very narcissistic and barbaric in a form of control. So you're basically saying that my people had to be colonized. We had to be fought for our land for other things to happen. No, we didn't. If your God is decreeing for people to die for something else to happen, then he's aggressive and a murderer because he doesn't have to do that. And don't tell me some wisdom behind it, some great wisdom where he can just decree for the same thing to happen on the planet without nobody dying. But the fact that you believe that God set up in the clouds and said, okay, we're going to let the indigenous people in America go through hell starting from the 15th century and still to the day going through hell because we need the world for other things that happen in the world to bring about a greater good. If I shot your son in the face right now and told you it's a greater good, you're not going to accept that. But they're going to say, no, what I did was wrong, but God decreed it because the son had to be shot in the face. Because a greater good comes from your son being murdered. Even though I'm a criminal, I'm going to jail. But God is the one that decreed it for me to shoot him in the face. So did I do the act or did God decree me to do the act? Because if God created my actions, created my intent, and he wrote it for me, then I didn't have a choice to shoot your son in the face. So why I'm going to jail for something I never have a choice to? You can lie and say I, I, I could have not shot him, but then that's still God that proved me not to shoot him. So when did I ever make my own decision? So I'm always been, it's always going to be God's decision, not my own. Because if you're saying I'm making a decision without God, God is not all powerful. He's not all known. to me and I don't know how recent but the person that sent it to me said they believe it was you know posted up and, and that it's very recent and the statement that was kind of you know difficult for me to even listen to this whole thing this is my third time actually listening to it before I even decided to say something about it but in this video I'm gonna have to take the gloves off dealing with this brother because if you don't understand you can rewind it and listen to it yourself he has made statements of kufr after kufr. Not only was the statements where you could see that it was skeptical or he was using skepticism and you know being doubtful. That's not even a bad. He even mentioned to you after saying, if God is all powerful and God is in control and God decrees that that's not what I believe. You understand? And grouping shaitan and God in the same family and mention it, it all is a part of the agnostics. And all travel back to this. All of this is comfort, brothers and sisters, if you don't understand it. And we try to tell you. That's why it's important, man. Oh, our Lord, do not cause our heart to deviate after you have guided us to Islam. Oh, the one who is determined the hearts. Make our hearts firm upon your deen. Allahumma. May, oh, Allah, make our hearts. Tawafin the Muslimin wa hikna bi salihin. Cause us to die as Muslims and to be joined with those who are righteous. It's important that you constantly make these du'as, these ad'iyas, brothers and sisters, because Islam is real and kufr is very much real. Now, this brother didn't start off on this way. And someone who sent this to me also had the opportunity of studying with this brother in Egypt, living with this brother in Egypt, being under the same scholar with this brother in Egypt had the opportunity and seen a different side of this particular brother that we're talking about now 
and the stuff that he's spitting out of his mouth now, the insult at the insult towards Allah's deen and to Allah Jalla wa'ala because he is confused and he's misconstruing things and misunderstanding things because he's diving into things he shouldn't be diving into and saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he was all powerful, none of these things would happen. No, you are ignorant. And it's clear that you're ignorant. And we're going to quote a verse today, inshallah ta'ala, to bring this out. Because sometimes we as Muslims don't even understand what the, the book or the, the, the themes of the Torah or the Sauras or the chapters. We don't understand them. And if we don't understand them, it's easy to make statements like this and, 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 and forget what's in front of us. Allah sent down a whole Sura called Surah to An'am. And a lot of people don't know that this Sura is a Sura that is filled with a lot of mashakir, okay? A lot of doubts that was put forth by the mushrikun and the kafirun. Allah dealt with those doubts. A lot of doubts after doubts were presented within this surah. That it was presented to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah gave him the content and how to deal with it. But I want to highlight a specific verse and it shows the state of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in dealing with this onslaught uh, and these, these doubts that was put forth by his people and the people shook and no matter what time and region or an area they're in, they still spew in the same stuff. Allah has a verse where he says, وَإِن كَانَ كَبُرَ عَلَيْكَ إِعْرَادُهُمْ فَإِنْ اسْتَطَعْتَ أَنْ تَبْتَغِيَ نَفَقًا فِي الْأَرْضِ أَوْ سُلَّمًا فِي السَّمَاءِ فَتَأْتِيَهُمْ بِآيَةٍ وَلَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَجَمَعَهُمْ عَلَى هُدَى فَلَا تَكُنَّنَّ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ فَلَا تَكُنَّنَّ مِنَ الْجَاهِلِينَ Even if he's crazy, and even if he's majnoon, I don't know if we're going to say that the brother is majnoon. He has mental illnesses. He has been diagnosed from a couple of... Um, Psychologist that mentioned that he does have he does battle with a lot of mental illness. He has depression in his family. Yes, we know that, but I'm not going to say the pen is lifted from this guy. I'm not a doctor to say that this is what legal sanction that mentioned that he's actually um, insane and that his faculty of aqal has been removed from him, so the pen is lifted. I'm not going to say that. I, I haven't came across any doctor that I know of that you know that he had dealt with, and I've been close with the brother to even say that this is his case and that maybe he's a little bit majnoon so he might be excused. No, he's making clear statements of kufr and he's attacking Islam. He's attacking Islam, brothers and sisters. He had been doing this for a while. I have kept my mouth shut for over a year and some change. I knew a lot of stuff that he has been doing for years. At least I have kept my mouth shut. Not even before he broke out with this. I'm talking about even prior to when he was in Atlanta, when he was married. I had privy information from his wife contacting me about things and statements that he were doing and saying that was good for him. And advising to be patient. And maybe he might have meant it this way, given all of the excuses possible that we can give. Now today we have to take the gloves off. That's not going to be the case. It's clear from anyone who has ears, who have eyes, who can see that this brother is spewing strictly um, kufr from out of his mouth. Kufr from out of his mouth. It's just clear kufr. All right? One thing to be aborigine and to identify with your, your roots and so forth. That's one thing. We're not saying that's kufr. One thing to say that, okay, I might be a part of this tribe or that tribe. We're not saying that's kufr. As long as you don't adopt the practices of that tribe, if that tribe practices is steeped in kufr and shirk, then you don't adopt that. You don't adopt their beliefs neither. You understand? But to go this far and to question Allah Jalla Wala Mulk, to question his kuwa, to doubt his attributes, his names, his rububiyya, his uluhiyya. This is what you're doing. If you listen to the statement, this is what he's doing. Maybe we have to, you know, study a little bit more Islam to know about our itikad. But he was attacking Islam, the belief of Islam. He was attacking it, insulting the law after insulting the law. So this verse that I recited to you, brothers, I want you to pay attention to how the Prophet was telling felt. The noble translation of this particular verse, brothers and sisters, is in Surah An Am, Surah Six. And this is verse 35. Allah said, if there are virgin from you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and from that which you have been sent, it's hard on you, and you cannot be patient of their harm to you, then if you were to able to seek a tunnel in the earth or a ladder to the sky so that, they may, so that you may bring them a sign, and you cannot do that, so be patient. And have Allah willed, he could have gathered them together all on true guidance. So be not of those, so be not you one of those who are jahid. And it's important that we understand this because this same wording was mentioned to Noah alayhi salatu salam in regards to his son on the day that the flood happened. And his son 
you know, took himself to a mountain instead of getting on the ark. And he said to Allah Azza wa Jal, indeed my, my family. And Allah reminded him that he's not of your family and don't be of the ignorant. It's important that we understand this when Allah Jalla is speaking to his messengers and his prophets in this manner. All right? Because Allah Jalla knows every detail inside and out. Okay? Don't be jahil in this regard. Don't be ignorant. Allah is telling Muhammad Jahideen. Don't be of the Jahideen. And then Allah reminds the Prophet, وسلم, your job is only to convey. Your job never been to make them accept anything that you come with. Right? Yes, we're referring to the Isa. We're referring to Christopher Poston, the, the individual who don't want to be called Isa no more, himself. We're referring to this guy. The individual who have insulted our Lord, our Rub, who have spewed hatred in the clip we just got finished playing. So you can go back and wait till this is over and rewind it and listen for yourself. You can listen to his own words for yourself. Do you understand? So that you don't have to keep saying this. We're talking about Esau, I can't believe this. No, Allah guides whom he wills. Pay attention to the verse we're talking about now. Allah telling Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, if they are version, you understand? If they're their fight back, their insults, they hurdling, their doubts, their skepticism, all of that is causing you a problem. It's weighing on you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to be grieved that they wouldn't accept the message. It wasn't for himself. If that was if that if that was causing some harm and was difficult upon you, O Muhammad, Allah Allah is telling the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, be patient. Because if he will, and that's who it's up to, they all would have been upon guidance. If he willed the case, then they all would have been upon guidance. It's not on any individual to guide any other individual. So, Isa, you can stop it, Christopher. You can stop with the nonsense of if Allah, he can guide it everybody, or if he decreed this, or some ultimate wisdom, or is that the shackle, mashakal, the, the, the mushrikeen throughout the Quran use the same arguments, and they weak. And Allah Jalla destroyed those bolted arguments back and forth about this, about that. They're weak. That's what they are. They're weak. It doesn't indicate that Allah Jalla is not in control. Or Allah is not all powerful. Or not all capable. You don't know Allah's wisdom. It doesn't mean that we are jeopardy. Now you're screwing some jeopardy stuff. Talking about we don't have free will in reality. No, you have a limited free will. We don't doubt that. And your free will has always been limited to the choice that you make. You have, a, you have a limited free will in regards to the choice you make. That's where your free will stops at. The choice you make. You've been given two paths. Either you're going to choose the right or you're going to choose the left. That's the choice. That's the limited free will. Other than that, outside of that, you don't have no will. And if Allah Jalal decided to create everyone without no will, it's, who are we to say anything? We're his creation, not the other way around. Do you understand? We're his slaves. And for you to question the fact of an Aboriginal people being enslaved by America. Come on, man. You, you forgot Pharaoh? You got the children of Israel? They've been slavery since the beginning of, beginning of man. They've been slavery. You want to cry about somebody being enslaved. And then look how he was talking about Ishmael and talking about Hagar. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's her name. Look how he was talking. Look how he was talking. No respect, no honor, no nothing. Just to feel some type of way towards the Arabs. Because he had a bad relationship when he was in Egypt or a bad relationship when he was overseas with Arabs, hearing stories about Arabs. So he have a problem. I know this personally from him. Do you understand? So when he speak like this, I know he's going at and he's indirectly taking these shots. Oh yeah, God going to let a child get sodomized and at the same time this and this and that. You are not Allah as a wajal. You don't know Allah's patient. You don't know Allah's subhanahu wa ta'ala capability. You don't know that. So if Allah Jalla wa'ala does allow it and he does allow it to happen, he didn't allow messengers who are the greatest people in this earth get their head cut off. There were prophets who children of Israel killed, man. The man of Israel, the children of Israel killed prophets, man. And if these were prophets and people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given inspiration to, and he still allowed them to die at the hand of their enemy, who are you, man? Who are you to come along and say, okay, somebody being sodomized, how can God happen? You said this is ignorant. It's an ignorant statement. And it's born out of ignorance. Because you can't fathom to comprehend. As Abu Bakr as Sadiq said, our comprehension of the Creator is our uncomprehension, uncomprehension of Him. We can't fathom to comprehend, comprehend His moves and why He do what He does. We can't fathom that. But Allah Jalla explains in the most best ways He can explain to us so that we can get understanding. This is why part of this is about our belief and part of our belief is about Tasneem. Do you understand that? A part of our belief is about submission, whether we understand it fully or not. That's a part of it. Not to come alone. 
I wanted to read uh, the benefits of that particular verse. And I want you to hear what Shekel Temin says in regards to this, because it goes directly towards what I just heard, this nonsense and this kufr. And it does not please me. Again, brothers and sisters, it does not please me to talk about this. And I'm not happy that Isa went off the deep end. I'm not happy about that. You know, I'm never happy about that. Someone you knew go off the deep end. But I'm not going to hold my tongue no more. I'm not holding my tongue from this brother going off the deep end. It's just not happening. So Allahu Jalla wa Ala, when he mentioned in this particular verse, um, when in Ka'an and Kabura, because none of these arguments are new, and none of these doubts that's being spewed right now are new. I want you to understand that, brothers and sisters. These doubts have been dealt with in the Quran and also in the Sunnah. Okay? So no one coming with something new. Alright, right here. So I'm gonna to go to the fa'id of this. The first benefit that he mentioned is that the Prophet وسلم, called the Adama Alihi Arad. The Prophet ﷺ was grieved difficultly. It, it was weighing heavy on the Prophet ﷺ in regards to the aversion that he was facing from the people that he was charged to call to Islam. And it, it hurt him bad. You know, it grieved him that they didn't accept the message. You know what I mean? Which is a true sign of a caller. And early man, he mentioned this from the Asbab and the signs of the, the Du'at is that they should show, a, a, a have mercy for the, for the people that they're calling, and they should be grieved and concerned. They should show a real concern over that. And this is why we have narrations where the Prophet ﷺ used to pray uh, for the forgiveness of his ummah, and to his feet used to bleed and get blisters on his feet. He used to pray tremendously, grieving over that of the ummah. Okay? Now, so, Shaykh Adameen says, وَهَلْ هَذَا انْتِصَارَ لِنَفْسِهِ عَمْ أَمْ رُقْبَةٌ بِهِدَايَةِ إِبَادِ اللَّهِ He says, so did the Prophet ﷺ feel this way because he was trying to aid himself in some way? Or was this out of the, a strong desire for the guidance of the servants of Allah? He says the, the second is no doubt. It's, it's the reason why the Prophet was, it was hard on And he said this is from the, the, uh, the completion of his advice to his ummah Okay, the second benefit is that a person it is befitting that the person that he does not, a person does not take the matter of the people aversion to him lightly. You understand? Rather, it is something that it grieves him heavily. It should. He should not يعني, cleanse to that which he is upon. In other words, him personally. If he's upon the haq, then it should only be, his grievance should be and concern should be them following the haq. Not following him, not following his words. You understand? For example, an individual doesn't care whether or not the people accept his dawah, okay, in terms of it coming from him. If the same message can be spread to him via another, then it's okay. As long as that same message of calling to the haq was there, okay, that becomes clear. He says, Well, I came in ajli muslihat al akhari. He says, However, he, he, he should be concerned with the rectification of another. Pay attention what he's saying. And this is my position with Christopher Poston. Okay? This is my position here. Look what he's saying here. He says, for example, if we were to witness a person who is knowledgeable, okay? You can say a person who's a scholar, but here a person who's knowledgeable. He's a worshiper and he's honorable. However, when it comes to the issue of Allah's names and attributes, he is not upon that which is correct according to Ahl al-Sunnah wa Jama'ah. All right? He deviates when it comes to the areas of Allah's names and attributes. He says, should this be difficult upon us or not? He says, la shak anahu yashak alayna hadha. However, this will be difficult upon you, uh, us. This will be difficult. If we know a person to be an avid, worship, avid worshiper, Someone who has knowledge, someone who is honorable via his worship and via his knowledge, but yet he's making grave mistakes in regards to Allah's names and attributes. That should concern us. Like we're seeing with Christopher posting now. When I heard that little bit of clip that I just heard from, that grieves me badly. Because here is this man spitting kufr. Someone who I sat side by side with me. Called, broke bread with, you don't even understand. Half of you guys don't even know him like I know him. 
for another wrong for you to get up there and say, oh, not fee simple as that. Is it? You don't know him. I know him. I didn't done business with him, travel with him. What do you want? You know, I, I know him, study with him exactly. So for you to come along and, and just think that I'm just, I'm not, I'm not one of those guys. You ain't going to never catch me, inshallah, picking on somebody. You should be picking on it. It took me a while to even get to this point, man. I kept my mouth shut for a while. People would tell you, they've been inboxing me, calling me on the phone. I'm talking to people I didn't talk to in a while. For an hour on the phone talking about the statements and the actions of this brother. And me, again, throwing gloves on. Maybe it's this. Because I knew the problems that he went through. The, the loss that he had suffered. I knew the mental illness that he had. I knew these things. And my love for the brother. Oh no, maybe it's this. But when I just heard what I just heard, which I've been hearing from him before, and I confronted him. I didn't jump on this camera. And just, no, I text him. Sent him the information. And let him know that what he's doing, he's out of pocket. This is kufr. This pure kufr, which you just spit out your mouth, is kufr. You can't even get around it. You can't say, oh no, what I meant by this. No, it's kufr. That's what it is. It's disbelief. How Allah Allah thee. Allah guide that brother back to that which is correct. I mean, he says, um, so he, he continues with this. He says, he said, He says, so if we were to look at this, this individual who's making this grave mistake in the names of Allah and his attributes, and we would look at them with the eye of qadr. Now pay attention now. The eye of qadr. What do he mean by bi'ayn al-qadri? Meaning by what Allah has decreed for this individual, then we would display mercy towards him, which I have been doing. We would display mercy towards this individual. Yeah, he has some mental illness problems. Okay, mercy. That's the qadr. He went through some difficulties. Okay, mercy. That's the qadr. Do you see it? We would display mercy towards this individual if it's the qadr. You understand? But look. He continues. وَقُونَ سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ And we will say, SubhanAllah, كَيْفِ يَكُونَ هَذَا الرَّجُلُ فَاضِ عَلَى قِيدَةٍ غَيْرُ سَلِيمًا We will say out of our mouths, we'll come out of our mouths, SubhanAllah, how could this be the man, a virtuous man, who is upon a belief other than that which is correct and sound? نَرَحَمَهُ حَقِيقَةً So we will have mercy upon him in reality. لِيَنَّهُ مَحْرُومٌ Because he has been deprived of certain things. لَكِنْ إِذَا نَظَرْتُ إِلَيْهِ and this is what we need to learn, man. But if we were to look at him now with the eye of the shara, legislatively we were to look at him, not from the qadr, not from Allah's decree, but if we were to look at him from the eye of the legislation, then it would demand upon us and become a comment upon us that we argue and dispute with this man. And that we debate with him, it would come and comment upon us due to this shara, due to the legislation. This is what the Shaykh is saying. فَإِنْ رَجَعْ إِلَى الْحَقِّ He said, رَجَعْ إِلَى الْحَقِّ فَهَذَا الْمَطْلُوبِ And if he was to return via our argument or dispute or a debate upon knowledge, if he was to return to that which is correct and which is the حق, then this is something that is sought after. وَإِلَمْ يَرْجِعْ But if he does not return, فَإِنَّنَا نَفْعَلُ بِهِ كَمَا قَالَ شَافَعِي رَحِيمُهُ اللَّهِ Then we are to deal with him the way that Iman Shafi have advised. We are to deal with him, I want you to pay attention to what Iman Shafi says. We are to deal with him the way that Iman Shafi, Rahmatullah Ta'ala Alayhi has advised. He says, Hook me fi ahlil kalami, and yadribu bil jaridi wa niali, wa yutafu bihim fil ashairi, wa yukala hadha jaza'u min tarak al kitab wa sunnah, wa akbala ala ilm al kalam, wa liyazu billah. Pay attention. We are to deal with him in this manner. Take the gloves off. What did Imam Shafi He said, my ruling, we're dealing with the people of Kalam, the people of rhetoric, the people of philosophy, the people of, the, of, of, of Greek and, and, and rhetoric, dealing with this stuff that they have taken and been influenced by the Greek and going over this and, 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 and denying the attributes or the names of Allah or denying Allah's rububiyya or some parts of his uluhiyya or denying the fact that this is or that or that. Dealing with this the stuff that we heard coming out of the mouth of this man just a minute ago. Here, pay attention to this. He says what my ruling would be is that this individual is to be beaten. You understand? We're to beat this individual with our shoes. Whatever we, we have, we take and we beat him. And he is to be what? He is, we beat him, he is to be dragged around in the streets. He is to be dragged around in the streets. And by the way, this does not mean that we can go beat Isa up. <laughs> First of all, by the way, I have to make that, that point. And by the way, the, uh, this doesn't mean that anybody can just go around beating on people. No. 
This is for the ruler, okay? The ruler of Islam, you understand? The one who have authority, have sulpa, okay? He can make a ruling like this, that a person, uh, this will be his punishment, or until he retract or leave alone that which it is. This is not, again, for us to take upon ourselves to do that. I had to make that clarity. Hopefully you understand. Tight. But just look at the severeness of what is being said. This is why Sheikh Osamin is bringing it. He says, what well, you call, and it is to be said to this individual, this is the recompense, the consequence for abandoning the book and the sunnah, and turning your attention towards that of rhetoric. Now, how Low much battery, more so, please charge. How, how much more so a person turning their, their, their attention towards uh, not just rhetoric, how much more so a person turning their attention towards tribalism, alphobiyya, or turning it towards qabila, rather than went headlong. I already knew his condition was like this. He was black and white because he suffered from multiple, he suffered from different stuff that has been mentioned by the Muslim psychiatrists that he, he should go through. He suffered from a lot of those things. So I already knew that it's, if, if he's into something, it's going to go low battery, you know, high up here, please charge. It's, going to go, it's going to go low here. You understand? It's going to be either high up here or it's going to be low there. I knew that he suffered from those things. Clear. So he went real hard into this tribalism stuff. Okay? Learned some new words. Changed his name and his identity. Allowed his daughters and them to come out of their garbs. You understand? All of this stuff. You can see the extremism. He went from one, one extreme Low battery. to another. Please charge. All right? He went from one extreme to another. You can, you can actually see that. He went from one extreme to the other. And by him doing that, you can see how it affected him. But he always had this deep down problem that he would concentrate. When I got with him, it was towards black people. That was his, his argument. We used to have a lot of debates in the library regard to his hatred that he would display towards black people. All right? Now, all of a sudden, it's my people. We have originally now. You know, I'm all for my people now. But you used, used to display a major component hatred towards black people. You understand? Now he then took that hatred and then re-ramped it and, 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 he, and it's towards Arabs, <laughs> Muslims, because he ain't going to come out and say, no, nah, I don't dislike Muslims. See, he's cunning like that. He's not going to come out. And I'm only telling you what I know because I address him. When I said to this man, are you saying statements of kufr? Are you, are you doubting this? Are you doing that? No, he twisted it all around. No, that's not what I'm saying. No, this is not it. You understand? But when he was talking to his wife for about two or three hours on the phone, his ex-wife, that is, he was saying all types of stuff to her. She said, Abu Zayd, when I got off the phone, I didn't know if the man was still Muslim. I didn't know if he still was upon Islam. I hung up the phone not knowing if I was still talking to a person that was Muslim. And how many of you have heard and witnessed from his page and the things that he put up there now that you are even questioning the fact of his Islam? How many of you are doing that? Don't lie to yourself. Don't keep sitting there saying I'm going to make a hundred million excuses. You can't make more excuses than I did. I kept my mouth shut for years. Do you understand? And now I'm saying something. Because he was a part of something that was groundbreaking by the Mishra law that was the night shift. Now I'm actually saying something. This man is screwing Kufr. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and protect us, man. Stop thinking you have arrived somewhere when you didn't. You don't know Islam in and out. I don't know Islam in and out. You need Allah Jalla wa ala. The Prophet Sallam himself, he said, Wala ta kill me ila nafsi. Huh? Quratu ayn. Do not leave me to myself for a blinking of an eye. This is the messenger of Allah. Do not leave me to myself for a blinking of an eye. And how was more so as us? Hear you. You already see what happened. This man going off the deep end. He left to himself. Allah, let's finish this up because we do have Jumu'ah. Last but not least, he mentioned here with and then he goes into the issue of the same thing that happened if we witness other acts uh, of disobedience from our, our, you know, our people in regards to like uh, Zina, for example. Then we're going to look at them from the Ayn of Qadr. Then we'll look at them with mercy. And if we look at them from the Ayn of Shara'i, we know that there's a ruling that must be now. Yeah, I understand. They can be hurt all they want, but it still doesn't give them the right or license to spew kufr. Do you understand? This is why Sheikh Oslam Taymiyyah, he made a beautiful point. He said, yes, the hukum may not apply to an individual until after the warning has reached him because Allah made this clear in his book. But it still doesn't mean that the deed that they were doing wasn't evil in itself. 
It still doesn't mean that it wasn't evil or dislike in and of itself. Do you understand that? The people that were doing evil and bad before the warning even got to them, that means Allah Jalla Wa'ala is not going to punish them until after the warning reached them, but it still was evil nevertheless. What this man is saying is still evil. I don't care what he have went through. And that's the point of Islam. That's what people need to understand. Islam is supposed to help you get through what you go through. Not the other way around. You don't want to feel some type of way towards Allah because you went through something. Allah gave you examples after examples. He gave you the best of people. He gave you a prophet that he took everything from. He took all of his kids. He took all of his wealth. He, took, he gave him a, a, a body de a defect. Do you not understand? He gave him leprosy. Do you not understand? All of the things he took from him. And that man, not once did he come out of his mouth and feel some type of way towards Allah or his deen. Not once. 18 years, he didn't suffer. Not once. That's supposed to be an example. That's what the stories are for. You read the book of Allah, that's what those stories are for. It's supposed to give us something and encourage us as an example. Do you understand? And we must have something to look at and to lean on. To realize this is how we're supposed to behave when something happened like this. Don't tell me a person being tested and at the same time it gives them a right to spew hatred and, and insult against Allah's deen and Allah himself. No. These individuals is crazy if they think that. You don't sit here and try to speak about Allah's wisdom. You don't know Allah's wisdom. You need a book to understand Allah. And he sent the revelation. That's what you need. You can't talk about Allah without revelation, without wahi. This is basic one-on-one. This is why the, the, the uh, uh, Sheikh Iman Sa'di, I have a book in my library where Iman Sa'di, he made a beautiful point. He got a book where he called that the enemies of the prophets and the messengers are the philosophers, man. People who think they are intellectuals. This is why you find them the greatest, they have the greatest aversion towards the, the MBA. Because the MBA, they're calling you to wahi, to revelation. And see, that bothers the philosopher. The person who thinks he's an intelligent, that bothers him because he relies on his aql. That's what he relies on, which is tainted and limited. So that bothers him. He can't. So what he do is he wanted those shack out there. I suppose we believe in this mystery God. I suppose we believe in this mysticism. I haven't even seen it. You haven't seen air since you've been born, but you ain't never doubted that it was there. Come on, man. You, you know for a fact you didn't create yourself. Your mother didn't create herself. Your father didn't create himself. You know that everybody on the face of the earth didn't create themselves, but you're not denying that. Come on. Come with this weak arguments. They weak. That's what they are. They're weak. They have no ground to stand upon. It's just shakwa. It's just desires, man. That's all it is. And if you go through something, Allah told you what to do. It's ta'inu bisabari wa salah. Seek help through aid and patience. That's what we've been commanded to do. The Prophet Wasallam, look at the trials, man. Everybody want to say, I went through this, I went through that. Look at the trials. Allah let the Prophet lose his male prodigy. He was actually taunted and made fun of by the Kufar and the Mushrikeen because they said that he was what? In the what? Canada, who what? He was actually a person that was cut off from having male prodigy. That is an example for us. Things that he went through. He lost kids, he lost children. He been suffering the hands. It shows us how we supposed to deal in the face of adversity. I'm coming to Islam. You get a little prick. You get a little thing. Then Allah Jalla is so merciful than that. The Prophet told us that it's not even a prick of thorn. It's not even something a fall. Anything you get that happened to you, except that it's an expiation if you bear it with patience. Look at the mercy there. So anything that happened to you, it also supposed to help you. Come here and, 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 and sit here and think, for example, that you got an excuse to behave ignorantly. And commit kufr because of what you went through. That's what your dean was putting you, it was, was putting you for, it was putting you through that. So it's giving you the necessary tools so that you can undergo whatever trials or storms come your way. That's what Allah is there for, man. People don't even use him on that, that term. I have to stop here, man. I have to stop. He's he, he bringing a beautiful point here. If you look at the eye of Shara'i, and he's teaching us something. When we look at people from the eye of Qadr, from Allah's decree, then yes, we are allowed to display some type of mercy and sympathy in that card, that regard. But when we look at them in the eye of legislatively, then we have to do certain things. We have to deal with them a certain way because they have chosen to step outside of the bounds and the perimeters of the Islamic legislation. And when they do that, then we have to deal with them accordingly. We can't say to ourselves, oh, that's my man. That's my brother. That's my sister. We can't do that. We have to say, no, what you're doing, brother, what you're doing, sister, what you're doing, my man, you are out of pocket. You are wrong. 
And Islam have said this. So this is what we're saying. And if you call the kufr, then we're going to call it out. That's what it is. The man had made a statement of kufr. Christopher Poston. Pay attention to the signs. It's right in front of you. The man don't even want to be called Esau or Esau no more. What are y'all doing that? You're not seeing the signs? Everything that's associated pretty much with Islam that he identified with Islam, he wants to leave off. Yeah, he gets around the Muslims and he says, okay, I'll pray with the Muslims. Yes, I know. Yes. He says, salam alaikum. Assalamu alaikum to you. Give you the rights when the people give him the rights. Yeah, he does that. But yet, and still, look at his own behavior and his own actions. He had removed. What was the reason to say your name is Christopher Poston now? They always been your name. So why did you why did you say Isa Abu Isa? Your name always been Christopher Poston. Why you didn't been using that? It always been that way since you've been born with the you haven't born. That's your birth name. You've been given Christopher. Poston. Why did you change it to Isa Abu Isa? Why? Think about. It. Okay, you took the Kunya Abu Isa because you had a son named Isa, right? But your name was Isa. So why did you change it back? You have to pay attention to people's character and their behavior. It shows you. You get an indication there. You see a sign there and it let us know this is what the brother is trying to move forward. You see what the person is putting up and what they're pushing. No one can say it about a fair. It's only about a permission law, but no one can ever say. You can go to all of my social medias. You can go for me meeting me, but no one can ever say that Nafis wasn't Muslim. No one can never say that Nafis doesn't believe in Islam. That would never, inshallah ta'ala, as long as I'm saying now, I'm not talking about in the future, because I don't know the future, but I'm talking about from my past. If you look from my past up to now, I'm in front of you. I'm not talking about the future. I don't know the future. I only can hope that Allah keep me upon this land. But I'm talking about from my past. No one can go back and search things that I've done in the past. Up to now, right now, to say that Nafis does not, is not Muslim, is not Islam. He gave me a confusion here. I thought Nafis was on this. No, you would never, no. You can never say that. In the future, I don't know what I might be upon. I hope and pray that Allah allow me to die upon Islam. You understand? That I die upon the sunnah and the correct understanding and the correct belief. I hope. But in the past, you can never challenge me on that and say that I wasn't upon Islam. No, I was upon Islam, but alhamdulillah. You understand? This is what the deen is for, brothers and sisters. Pick up your book. You want to cry to everybody, you want to complain to social media, you want to get on Instagram. You want to... Pick up your book. That's what you should do. Understand that the book is a rock. That's what you need to do. Pick up the book of Allah. Pick it up. It's a rock. You get all the strength you need. You can't strengthen your spirit. You don't even know your spirit. It's on a different realm. So Allah gave you words that your spirit would identify if it hears it. Your spirit can identify it. Trust me. When you recite the book of Allah, your spirit can actually identify what's being said. More so than you, your physical flesh. Nah, but your spirit, it, your soul can hear it. It, it, can, it can actually identify with it. We ask Allah Jalla to grant us safety, protection, and to protect us from what our brother is being afflicted with. And to protect us from falling into that which our brother has been afflicted with. And do not try and test us like he had tried and test that particular brother. And we ask Allah Jalla wa to allow us to believe that whoever he chose to guide, he guides them whom he wills. And whoever he chose not to guide and lead astray, then that's also according to whom he wills. We ask Allah do not let us leave us for the blink of the eye and let us die upon the slam. Do you understand? And we ask Allah, most importantly, to return Isa back. And if he stays upon the road that he is, then that's your decision. That's your will. This is what Isa, the true Isa Ibn Umariyam said when he made dua for his people. He said, oh Allah, if you forgive them, then that's according to your will, according to your mercy. And if you choose to punish them, that's according to your knowledge. Do you understand? We make the same dua. If Allah choose to... To, to, to have mercy upon somebody and forgive them, that's Allah's mercy. If he choose to punish them, that's his, that's his knowledge. He can do whatever he wants. That's his servant. That's not mine. So we ask Allah Jalla to realize and recognize that there's nothing better than Islam. There's nothing greater than Islam. There's nothing greater than the Sunnah. We need both of them in order to walk the road that we need to walk and to deal with the faces and the difficulties of this life. We hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us to die upon that. Quran, Sunnah, Fahma Salaf. You understand? Quran, Sunnah, Fahma Salaf. And you see people going astray and off the deep end when they leave that tariqah. That's when you see them going off the deep end. Trust me. You see a brother and a sister start going off the deep end. You see it. The way they talk, the way they move. If they leave off the book, the Sunnah, and that of the Salaf, it's a clear indication, brothers and sisters. This is what this brother's upon. That's what that sister upon. They're going down the deep end. You stay away from that. Quran, Sunnah, Fahma Salaf.
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever we said that was incorrect in our translation today, but for myself and the shaitan, whatever we said is correct from Allah, jalla wa'ala, subhanakallah, wa bihamdika, ashadu wa'ala, astaghfirullah, jazakallah, khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.